I'm sure you've seen these builder kits before. Essentially just nuts and bolts and these connector pieces that have holes in them so that you can build all sorts of constructions based on where your imagination takes you. I'm a dad of two kids, so I played with these a lot with both my son and my daughter. And one thing I always thought to myself is, dude, I could do that. I mean, essentially we're just talking about pieces of wood with holes in them and nuts and bolts, and you've got the basics of the kit. So when x sent me this machine and they said they wanted to sponsor my video, I knew this was the moment to finally make what I've been thinking. Imagine an open source builder kit that you can build like that inside of any makerspace. Whether it's in your library or a school or you've got a machine like this at home, you could make these kits at the push of a button. So whether you want to make little small kits that you could use as an educational resource or just to play around and invent things, or maybe you want to make something that's a little bit larger, you want to scale it up, and you want to build something that's more robust like furniture. All of this is now possible. So as any amateur designer would do, I embarked on my journey. So I opened up Onshape and immediately started making lines that I thought I would then export to cut on the laser cutter. Started with the center point rectangle, gave it some dimensions, next up a circle for the hole, and I used the linear pattern to run it across. And then I added some sketch fillets on the corner. And just when I was finishing and happy with my design, I realized this kind of sucks. I mean, it's not bad. We could send this to the laser cutter, cut it from wood, and we have the piece, but it's not what I want to do. Let me show you what I mean. So after all the excitement of making one piece, I realized this isn't what the world needs. I want something that anyone can use anywhere and they can easily make. And that just doesn't work when you're designing these pieces one by one. Basically, the problem is I realized I made one piece and that's fine, but what if I want a longer length or I want more height to it? Or maybe I wanna make the circles a different size, perhaps a bit larger or smaller so that they can fit different bolt sizes. I mean, at the end of the day, the idea is to make a solution that's easy for everyone everywhere in the world. It's easy to buy bolts and nuts anywhere and they're cheap. The only thing missing are the pieces that perfectly fit the requirements of the user. And so I realized that I would literally have hundreds of different combinations that I might design. And even then it might not be the exact size that a user needs, especially when scaling that size up a lot or down to something very small. And although I thought about using the variables and expressions and on shape, I really wanted something that's just simple and easy to use and share for everyone in the world. No matter your level, you can be advanced or a complete beginner and produce these pieces at ease. I knew a few things. The tool, it needs to be completely free. It needs to be something that's easy to access for everyone. It has to be easy to use and it's gotta be versatile so you can set the dimensions of your piece to anything you want in seconds. And after a lot of thought, it finally hit me. I need to make a simple app, something that could be coded to give me these things. But then it started to feel complicated and I don't really have experience doing this and I wanna make sure that it's free and easy to access. And that's when I realized the best option is a web app. And that's when I got the big idea. What if I use ChatGPT? to write all the code I need in a single HTML file, JavaScript included, which I could then embed on Google Sites. And that way I could test very quickly. That would definitely be free hosting, and it's easy to access because all I have to do now is share the link with you if you wanna try the tool. I made a pool. All right, I've got all my notes well organized and tidy here. I'm not gonna go through this bullet by bullet, but of course you can always pause and go through this if you're interested. The code is generated and the features included. That checklist looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and copy this and we'll try it out now on Google Sites. Okay, here we are. I've just started a blank site and we can delete this. So we'll click on embed and then the embed code tab and paste the HTML code here. Then click next and we get a preview that looks pretty good, I think. Let's insert. And it looks a little funky to be honest. I noticed some space is missing here. Uh, margins are really tight here on the left and right as well. Let's open up a preview and test the functionality. Okay, so length is adjusting, so that's good news. Uh, we're getting some error messages thrown as well. It looks like the numbers of holes are dynamically changing, increasing or decreasing as they should. All right, the height works. Corner radius looks good. Yep, that's good. Diameter of the hole is working. We're also getting more errors thrown and we can adjust the distance between holes, so that's good. All right, let's test the download, and we'll open it, and it works, so that's good news. We do get an SVG. Okay, so let's take our feedback and bring it back into chat. We need a little more margin left and right in that preview box, and we'll mention what's wrong with the holes where we have that space on the right side. I've got a comment on errors, and also the button. We're gonna space that down a bit, make it bigger, and the color green so you really notice it. All right. Let's copy the new code. Go ahead and delete the old box and let's embed entirely new code by following the same process we did before. And we'll insert that now. 
And let's see if it works by adjusting some of these values like the length. And wow, yeah, look at that. That is what I'm expecting. So playing with different values and it's giving me the results that I want. Oh, and of course, before I forget, I'm going to publish this and I'll put the link in the description so you can try this tool out yourself. All right, so I'm just gonna insert the material and let's position the head so that we can use that auto focus feature right here. All right, now we can click the auto measure button. That's pretty quick, I like that. Okay, this is something I really love about this Xtool Creative Space is most common materials can be found here. And I think this is three millimeter pine that I'm working with. And so now if I'm gonna cut, these are the recommended settings. That's really nice. It saves me a lot of time and headache. Okay, so let's line this up and I'll position up in this top left corner. That looks pretty good. So let's just start with the small piece as a test. And if that goes well, we'll cut the rest in bulk. Something I like is we have a preview and time estimated and a simulation if we wanna see the path. Framing is here, but we're gonna skip that for now. Let's start. So you probably heard that beep. That is something I really love about this machine. It's rich with safety features. You start, but you have to physically push here. And that gives you a chance to take one more look before you begin the cut. Also, if I open this, look what happens. Absolutely rich with safety features. Let's process again and I'll push start. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's take the piece. But it already looks like this hole might be too small. If you look carefully here, something is definitely wrong here. Like this should be a height of 20, and I think we set this to 40. So we might have to go back and check the tool. It would have been too perfect if it had worked the first time. It never does. Let's go and fix it. Okay, the code is updated. Let's go ahead and try the values once again. We'll do a 20 by 40. Hole diameter will be five and the rest looks good. Let's try to download the SVG and back to creative space. Let's import the image. Fingers crossed, boom, there it is. Look at that, 20 by 40. Okay, that was maybe a little bit of overexcitement, but it works. Let's get a little fist bump. Boop. That is more like it. Oh, baby. Look at that. That looks like a good result if you ask me. All right, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's a pretty big difference. And now the big moment. Just kidding, that was M4, M5. Wah, like a glove. Let's go cut some more. I almost forgot this little guy because it is super silent. The auto air assist is making sure those cuts are clean. Love this. Shout out to Xtool, there's absolutely no mess. These are beautiful clean cuts. No residue, no soot. All right, cool, here we have it. Our first little starter kit. We've got nuts and bolts here. These are M5, and then we've got pieces. Let's see what we can make. All right, so there are the obvious builds, which are perfect for a younger audience in education. And those are just basic geometric shapes, such as a triangle or a square, which even offers a great opportunity to understand angles. And of course, combining to make things that are more familiar, like this little house. But essentially, we're always going to be stuck in working with lines in 2D space. Now, in a future video, I will generate more parts. But for the moment, we can use this to expand to the 3D space, which is just a longer M5 bolt. And you can also experiment with washers and wing nuts to have more possibilities. All right, so after a bit of thinking, this is the first idea that I came up with to make something that's more 3D and functional. It is a laptop stand to elevate my laptop. It's something adjustable here easily with wing nuts on both sides and a small stopper here so that the laptop doesn't slide off. Let's try it out. Stopper's working well, it's holding in place at the angle that I want, and I can adjust that angle if I want to as well. That's working really nicely now. Look at that. Okay, now let's push the app and this machine to the limits. I wanna make something big and for that we need thicker material. So I found these strips of wood and I think it's gonna be perfect. It's probably about 90 of usable material and about nine millimeters thick. First, we have to cut this in smaller pieces so it fits on the machine. You wanna cut down but leave just a little bit remaining so you can karate punch the rest of the way. That did not work. Ah, it works. This is pine nine millimeters. I'm really excited to see if that machine can cut it. Just did a quick test and no problem at all. It cuts through it like butter. Now let's output some big SVGs. All right, it's almost ready. 
and now it's time for the smaller pieces. All right, everything's ready. For this one, I wanna build something to test the strength. Let's go. Okay, so this is what I built. We're gonna attach this top piece to this post here, and then I'm gonna hold on to this and we'll see if it can support my weight. All right, that is just like a perfect fit right there. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm feeling pretty nervous. I weigh close to 80 kilos, so uh, let's see what happens. I hear cracking. All right, I'm gonna put all my body weight on it now. Holy crap. Wow. That is incredible how strong that is. There's some pull-ups. Two. Oh. Yeah, that thing is not breaking. Dang, that's incredible. I'm impressed. I'll admit I'm impressed. I did not think it was gonna be that good. Wow. That thing is insanely strong. 